Mora, salary negotiable. Look, Traveler, an urgent hiring notice and they're paying top Mora, too! Oh, Paimon likes the sound of that. Hmm, you're right, it is strange. Do you think something happened to Yenxiao? Because that guy barely lets anyone ever set foot in his kitchen. Doesn't exactly seem like the type to hire help. The notice says interested parties should go upstairs and talk to the innkeeper Huayan. Should we go and see what's up? Uh, well, that. And to check up on Yan Xiao, of course. Boss, uh, there's really no need for this. It's just a little burn, that's all. It won't get in the way of my work. Perhaps not, but continuing to work will only hinder your recovery. You need to rest for a few days. We'll figure something out. Huayan! Yanxiao! Oh? Traveler and Paimon! What brings you to this neck of the woods? And we decided to come check out... Um... Check out... Uh, I knew we shouldn't have posted that notice. It's really nothing to worry about. I'm fine, I swear. How kind of you. My thanks to you both. And thanks on Yan Xiao's behalf, too. There's nothing to be embarrassed about, Yan Xiao. Just tell them what happened. Oh, all right. Well, basically, we had a lot of guests pouring in for the lantern rite. Things got busy, I started rushing. And I ended up accidentally burning my hand while plating a dish. Well, you know what they say. Play with fire long enough and you're bound to get burned. E even the best chefs slip up sometimes. A anyway, it's nothing, uh, just a tiny burn. I can still... Now, now, I don't want you pushing yourself. You'll only make it worse. And then you'll be looking at more than just a couple of days off to recover. But the Lantern Rite's only just finished, and we're still getting tons of guests. Now's not a good time for me to rest. B uh, uh, plus, lots of the guests are visiting from other nations. We can't just bring in some random chef off the street. We have a reputation to uphold. I, I refuse to let someone else ruin the good name we've made for ourselves here. <laughs> Listen to you. Anyone would think that you're the boss and not me. But he's not wrong. Yan Shao was one of the favorites in the Masterful Chefs Tournament. No matter how you look at it, his are big boots to fill. I don't mean to boast, but any chef of my caliber probably has their own restaurant to look after. It's not going to be easy to find someone who's got the skills and has the time to help us out. Hmm. Looks like we might have to increase the pay we're offering even further. Do we know anyone that's a good chef and has the time to help out? Oh, of course, you! Oh, right! Yes, now I think about it. I do recall hearing good things about your cooking ability. I suppose I'd added you to my mental list of people who can hold their own in a combat situation, but forgot you can cook. Keeping a mental list of people who can fight. <laughs> Maybe a story for another time. More importantly, I'm sure Yan Xiao would be comfortable leaving his kitchen in your hands, if anyone's. What do you think, Yan Xiao? Well, since it's you, I suppose that's better than anyone else. What do you think, Traveler? Should we do it? I should warn you that cooking for customers is quite a different ball game from cooking for yourself, so I'll stick around the kitchen over the next few days to help smooth things over. Oh, so he's not leaving the kitchen after all? I believe there's some spare kitchenware here at the inn. Boss, would you mind? Of course, of course. I'll take care of it. Whew. 
All done. Come, take a look. This was made with your measurements in mind. Ah, oh, it's nothing. A little handicraft and elbow grease goes a long way. All right, Yan Xiao. I'll leave you to take it from here. You really went to all the trouble of building a new stovetop? What was wrong with the original? Boy, you really hate when people touch your stuff, huh? No, no, it's nothing like that. As Boss always says, hire who you trust and trust who you hire. I just thought the original setup might be a little, um, tall for you. Ahem. <clears throat> uh, anyway, as I was saying, cooking for guests is different from cooking for yourself. Not only do you have to execute on taste, aroma, and appearance, but you also need to ensure speed, precision, and consistency. Having the right equipment is a big part of that. Ill-suited equipment doesn't just make the job more tiring, it also slows you down. And paying customers don't have unlimited patience. Sometimes cooking is all about being well prepared. That's how you ensure speed. Okay, and what about precision and consistency? Ah, precision all comes down to using your eyes. Where to slice into a particular cut of meat, how much oil to use, how to tell when a dish is done cooking. When you cook for yourself, you can always add salt if it's too bland or add water if it's too salty. You can tweak the taste as you go, but in a restaurant, there's not that much room for trial and error. Worst case scenario, Paimon can deal with any subpar dishes by making sure they get properly disposed of. <laughs> the final thing you have to focus on is consistency. You have to be able to handle the most challenging orders with the same level of technique and skill as the easiest ones. This is particularly important when you have guests from all over, each with their own tastes and preferences. You have to cater to their own dietary needs while also giving them the opportunity to enjoy our local delicacies. Uh, this last point is making Paimon's head spin. <laughs> Don't worry. Matter of fact, someone as well-traveled as you may even have a better handle on it than me once you get started. And of course, I'll be around to help you over the next few days. I don't think we'll have any trouble making all our guests feel right at home. There's no time to lose, so let's get started. I imagine you probably have a good handle on the cooking side of things already. What you need to pay attention to is remembering each table's order. Try not to get them mixed up. This is going to be a cinch. Uh, what chicken are we on again? Table one was onions, but no chilies. Table two was chilies, but no onions. And table three was, uh, table three was chilies, but hold the chilies. Was Paimon just sleep floating? Ugh. We didn't even get a break in the middle. Paimon's brain has turned to mush. Is it always this busy here? No, but this is peak season. You both did a mighty fine job for your first time serving guests at the inn. Luckily, all our customers were familiar faces this time around, so we didn't get any strange requests. Otherwise, today would have been even more challenging. No strange request? Someone asked for almond tofu drizzled in soy sauce. Even Paimon has never tried that combination. <laughs> it's a wide world out there. People have all kinds of different tastes. Being able to cater to all is the real essence of Liyue cuisine. Also, the thing about requests is that they're usually very specific. So as long as you do what they asked, you're unlikely to have any issues. What's really tricky is when guests give you free reign to do anything you want. Uh, excuse me. Are you still open by any chance? Huh? Paimon knows that voice. <gasps> Let's go check it out! 
what should we do? It doesn't look like anyone's here. Uh, if only we'd gotten here a bit sooner. It's all right. If we start building a campfire now, we'll be eating before too long. Right. Besides, if anyone's to blame, it's Linny. So busy being a greedy culture vulture that he lost track of time. Linny, Lynette, Fremenay, it is you! Paimon? So, is the Traveler here? Traveler, Paimon! What a nice surprise! Paimon was gonna say the same thing! We're just lending a helping hand at the inn. Anyway, so that's how we ended up here. But what about you guys? Don't tell us. Uh, father sent you on another mission? No, quite the opposite, actually. We're in Liyue on vacation, and while we're here, I thought a cultural tour might be in order. Uh, uh, father said we deserve some rest after everything that happened recently. Otherwise, it could jeopardize our next mission. It's not every day we get this kind of opportunity. Lenny thought it might be fun to spend some time in Liyue, especially since it's lantern right season. We could hardly pass up the opportunity to watch a Liyue-style magic show. Although, I think they call it Conjuring here. Uh, in our time here, we've seen Conjuring tricks incorporated into a Liyue opera show, and even a Wusho dance. It was amazing. So, we decided to stay here for a few more days to see what other forms of inspiration this land might have in store for us. We visited Granny Roshin in Chingsa Village not long ago, and today we continued our cultural tour in the area around here. In the end, though, we lost track of time. We haven't even eaten anything yet. <laughs> and speaking of eating... As you know, seafood is a big part of both Liyue and Fontaine cuisine, but it's cooked very differently here. We simply had to try some local seafood after coming all this way. That's another reason why we decided to extend our trip. Oh, need any recommendations? What have you tried so far? That fish one with the misleading name. Sounds bland, but it's drowning in hot chilies. Oh, you mean black back perch soup? You're right. The name doesn't give much away. <laughs> it looked and smelled so appetizing that Lynette took a huge mouthful, blissfully unaware that she was about to set her mouth on fire. She could barely speak for the rest of the day after that. Uh, luckily, that wasn't a huge adjustment for her. <laughs> What? Aren't you guys hungry, too? Uh, yes. A little. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. I'm ready to eat. Traveler, I'm afraid we'll have to send you back to the kitchen now. Hmm. Good question. I doubt we'll be able to decipher the menu, so why don't you recommend something? You should be pretty familiar with our tastes. Uh, one more thing. Please, if you have a heart, don't make it spicy. <laughs> Fontaine, huh? No wonder they can't handle too much spice. Still, if we make the food too bland, they might as well be eating back home. Hmm. Uh, there's this crab and shrimp stir-fry I know that could work. It's quite heavily seasoned, but it's a lot milder than it looks. It has a light but really satisfying flavor. Ooh, that sounds perfect! What's it called? <laughs> well, this is where it gets interesting. 
They call it the Palace Jewels. The crab roe is supposed to look like pearls of gold, and the shrimp meat like chunks of jade. Here's the recipe. When you're ready, go ahead and give it a try. Ah, yes. We meant to say, you two must be tired after a long day of work. Do you want to eat with us? Oh, now that you mention it, Paimon is a little hungry. Well, if you insist, then who are we to refuse? <laughs> oh, right. Of course. You're still our customers. Uh, why aren't you eating? The sauce looks a little overpowering. Oh, uh, according to Leowick custom, it's probably good table manners to let someone else go first. <clears throat> Looks delicious, Traveler. I guess I'll dig in first. Here goes. What is it? Do you need some water? No. It's delicious. The flavor is so... Pure. It's drenched in sauce, but somehow it just enhances the natural flavor of the seafood. T try it for yourselves. Um, uh, all right. Mmm. Hmm. <laughs> what is that? Crab row? Yep, you have quite the palate, Lynette. No wonder it pairs so well with the shrimp meat. I've never seen it prepared this way before. According to the creator, chewy crab, compliment succulent shrimp, making a spectacular seafood ensemble with a succulent flavor and luscious mouthfeel. The crab row glitters like pearls of gold, and the shrimp shines like chunks of jade. Hence its name, the Palace Jewels. So that's where the name comes from. Huh. I suppose it's quite fitting then. Huh. Was Paimon always this well-spoken?
This dish must be right up your alley, Lynette. Huh? Uh, it's half gone already? When did that happen? I heard that in Liyue. The biggest compliment you can pay to the chef is to leave a clean plate. It's delicious. Thank you ever so much. Wait, don't fight over it! Hey, leave some for Paimon! I think... I'm finally getting the hang of chopsticks. Uh, yeah. Well, Linny and Lynette picked it up in no time, but they're naturally dexterous. Unlike me, it's taken me a lot longer, but I'm slowly getting there. Oh, uh, speaking of chopsticks, in one of the shows we've seen here, someone performed a conjuring trick using a bowl and chopsticks. So, if I want to be a good magician's assistant, I need to keep practicing. Lynette's not usually so forthcoming about what she likes. But this time, well, she's expressed it in more ways than one. I guess you've rubbed off on her, too. <laughs> Or maybe your cooking is simply too delicious to resist. The next time our paths cross in Fontaine, you'll have to fire up your cooking skills for my other siblings as well. How does that sound, oh great master chef? Oh yeah? <laughs> well then, I'll have to clear my schedule. Calorie surplus detected. Digestion mode engaged. Yeah. Well, Lenny and I are usually careful about what we eat, because we have to stay in performance shape. That, plus it's generally bad manners to overindulge at the dinner table. But once in a while, it's nice to treat yourself in the company of family. Besides, if I'd waited until my brothers were finished trying to outpolite each other, the food would have gone cold. So your friends like the dish, huh? Well done! Not bad at all for your first day on the job. There'll be more to come, so keep it up. <laughs> 